Okay, let's analyze a polynomial function. So I'll get a little guy here to analyze and all these little things right here. It's a big old microscope or telescope. Not what is it? It's called a, uh, I don't know what it's called. All right. But anyway, here we go. Let's do this function right here. Let's find all the zeros. Well, the first thing I want to do is what? Set it equal to zero and then factor. Is there something common? Yes. A, at least a 2x squared. And because the first term is negative, I'm going to factor out a negative. I don't like dealing with negative x's in the first in the leading coefficient. Makes it very difficult to factor more. So I'm going to do this here. I have this negative 2x squared. And if I factor negative 2x squared out of this negative 2x to the fourth, it leaves me an x squared. And if I take that times, divide that by this, I have a negative 1 left over. Now then, I can factor. Well, think about it. That's like a middle term of 0x, which means the factors are only what? Well, 1 or 1 and 1, and 1 minus 1 does make 0. So it factors 2. If you follow the same logic here, that's a minus 1 and a plus 1 for my factors. And if you recognize that is a difference of squares, I can square root 1, and it is a minus right there. So here's how it factors. So to analyze this, now set each one of these equal to 0. Well, let's look at that first one. Basically, I'm going to divide everything by negative 2, and I have an x squared equals 0. Here I have x equals 1 when I add 1, and here when I minus 1, I get x equals negative 1. And if I square root x, technically I have a positive or negative 0, but 0 is neither what? Positive nor negative. But if I had a different number when you square root it, you have a positive answer and the negative. But here I just have that, that 0. So what's going to happen is this. I have dots at 0, 0, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. That would be the answer to this one here to find the zeros. I found there at 0, 1, and negative 1. And you could write it basically like this one, like right there, or you could write it like that because those would mean the same thing as I found all the zeros. All right, so let's analyze this. Notice, if you, uh, we put dots right there at our points where it crosses 0, and you'll notice this. It's a leading coefficient is negative, and it's even, meaning the last thing they do is both what? Go down, they both fall. So, and then what happens is because this zero was a squared, it doesn't go through zero back like that, it actually bounces off of the line back up. And this graph would look like that, and there'd be a relative maximum at that particular point right there. And there's a relative minimum also at zero, zero just on this particular one, all right? So relative maximum occurs at that's like, actually I think that's like square root of two, negative square root of two and a half, Square root of 2 and a half is exactly where those values ended up being if you were to do a particular math and get exact answers. All right? So, repeated zeros for a polynomial function has a factor of this here. See this here? 